Okay, I'm going to show you how to do dialysis at home, which is what I do. I do peritoneal dialysis. It's not fun. I warn you. First, I wash my hands. So, I'm going to sanitize. Okay. Stay safe, safety caps. Don't have any drinks or anything like that. Here. Actually, I shouldn't have that here. Um, okay, this is except uh, it's okay for skin use or cleaning the site, which I'll show you in a minute. Alkabase 50. This is a uh, bleach uh, top high tech stuff, area 51 type cleaning solution. You clean anything off. Um, it, it's bleach, basically. Uh, so you want to wipe down your area, make sure it's clean, make sure it's, you know, clean is like not dirty. Just make sure there's not dirt or anything hanging out. But you want to sterilize it. Well, it's not sterile, it's clean. Let's make that uh, distinction. Okay, now it's clean. I'm going to lay one of these down. This is a sterile cloth. Well, not sterile, clean. Right. Get those two words uh, straight. Uh, island dressing. Uh, we'll use that lighter. Uh, got some extra sterile or clean, clean uh, wipes. So put this over here. Except this is more for the body. Let's uh, whereas. This is for surfaces or other top areas. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, these are gauze pads, uh, sterile inside. Not anymore. We're gonna sit that down there, or actually what you can do, sit it on top of the, pad, of the, the wrapper. Take one of these out. This is a stay safe cap. All right. That's a dialysis pole, I'm not a stripper pole, as many of you would probably. I'm not that kind of guy. Okay. All right. One thing you want to do: get a mask on. You don't want to be coughing and sneezing out and all this stuff because uh, that'll spread germs and get germs inside the dialysis port area. You're in trouble. You can get peritonitis, which peritonitis is pain. I, I had it <clears throat> 10 years ago, and it sucks. That's all. I'm not going to get one of that anymore. Uh, you can't use a knife to open these. They say, you know, says there's no knives. You might break the boxes. If you might break the bags on the side. Uh, it's a simple trick. And you're going to be flat right there. And just to pull up. You have a bag. Check your percentage of fluid. This is 1.5 percent. Still streaming. Sorry, I had a battery issue. Uh, 1.5 percent fluid, which there are very many percentages of fluid. But this is a lower percentage. It takes off less fluid than, say, like your 2.5%. Uh, now, you want to check the bag for leaks, abnormalities, anything like that. You're going to hang it out on the pole. Gravity is your friend in this situation. The higher the pole, the faster it goes into you. But first, you have to drain out what you have in you, which will come out in this bag, which should go on a flat surface. Uh, and you want to monitor the whole process to make sure there are no leaks. Okay, this is our little, uh, well, all right, we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna take our, our sterile gauze. We're gonna spray that down in alkabase. Our surfaces, our glorified, our, our special bleach, let's call it. 
All right, now we're gonna take the, uh, what's this thing? All right, I'm gonna take this thing. Ooh, fancy, it's patented. Uh, it's called the Stay Safe uh, thingamajig, yeah. So, anyway, gonna wipe that down with a special bleach. Like I said, our hands are clean, okay? So, there's no junk on them. This feels like an Andy Warhol video, like one of those videos where someone, uh, like two people are just kissing for a couple of hours, or, you know, sleeping for like eight hours. Because this is going to be boring as hell, let me tell you. I imagine doing this for four hours in a clinic with your blood. I, I did that for a while. And that's called hemodialysis. This is peritoneal dialysis, which involves surgery. I have a port right here. Probably pull my pants up. I'll say I can hear my mom talking right now. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna take that. This is our our lifeline. It is sterile inside of this, surgically sterile clamp right here, a little twist off port right here, and we're going to make sure that stays as clean as possible. That gets dirty, well, call the clinic. Um, we're going to open up another sterile pack, and the best way to do this is just to spray it right in side the little package it comes in. That tends to work. Um, okay, and we're going to wrap the tip of the peritoneal port and up for a bit. Now, like I say, wrap it up for like two minutes or three minutes. We're going we're gonna to wipe it down and make sure it's covered and make sure it's coated. All right, we're gonna make sure it's taken care of, but in training, you know, they give you a certain amount of time because it's protocol. And we're going to use, uh, as my dad would say, common sense, uh, which I have none of, to uh, wipe this down. And we already wiped down our uh, fancy thing we did, so, this spot that says extension, we are gonna, we dropped it. So we're gonna have to wipe it down again. Yay. Uh, all right, let's tear this open. Uh, spray that down ever so hastily. Put it back into some gauze. Let's let it sit there for a second. It's good to have a trash can around while doing this. I don't have one right here, but this is just for filming purposes. Welcome to my living room, by the way. I try to have something to do while I'm doing this. I'm talking to you right now. All right, we're gonna put that into the extension. We're going to open our safety cap so that the side we grab is the white side. Pull it out. It has betadine inside of it. Betadine is a fancier form of iodine. It sterilizes. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna go, well, maybe I should. Uh, yeah, technically, okay, so there's a little pin inside of this that stays in this part. When I remove this and clamp it to the main part of the dialysis dial, and uh, there's a pin inside here that will engage once I'm finished with that, but I have to drain first. So that takes a long time. So I hope you have the time and we're clamped. You gotta make sure you're clamped, okay? Let me say we go ahead and spray your hands again because this is really the moment of truth. Like if, if any part of this right here goes wrong, if anything gets into it, it could cause infection, serious infection. You could end up in the hospital. Uh, it would hurt for a week. 
and you would you would pray for mercy. Uh, it's just to dry my hands out here. All right, so we take our extension, loosen it up slightly. Take this off. I'm the truth. Kind of talk. Okay, now we're attached to the system. Now we're going to unclamp. Uh, the dial is in a dream position, which means we're going to. The fluid that is inside of me right now is coming out. This is fluid that I put in earlier, about four hours ago. Three and a half, four hours, five hours, whatever they say, whatever they prescribe you at your at your doctor's office is uh, how long the fluid should dwell inside you. Uh, the term is, uh, let's see, mm. uh, ba -ba -ba. you know, I forgot the term, but I know what it is essentially, so I'm not too worried about that. Now you want a, a place to, it's those little suction cups on the bottom, you want a place to put this. Kind of, kind of move that out of the way. We're going to put it on our uh, clean surface here. Usually there's an extension that comes from the pole to the dialysis uh, divider. I don't have that for some reason. Or they break easily. Now you can sit and wait while this bag fills up, which as we see it's already starting to fill up with fluid that I've had inside of me for the past four hours. And that fluid is a clear yellow color. You want to make sure it's clear. If it's not clear and it's a little cloudy, uh, cloudiness is, could be a sign of infection. It could be a sign of uh, too much fibrin. It could be a sign of perforation of the inside of the body, especially the peritoneum, which is uh, peritoneum is an organ itself. It, it, it's a wall that separates um, the organs from other tissues in the body. It has capillaries in it, which essentially uh, the dextrose inside the dialysis fluid is electronegative and it, it attracts the toxins from the capillaries inside the peritoneum and it puts them into the, the fluid that you drain out and that's, that's where you get the yellow color. It can consist of salts, dead blood cells, and uh, other wastes in the food you eat. Um, eating is another thing. I cannot have much phosphorus or potassium or sodium. All of those things make dialysis much more complicated. And uh, you feel much better when you eat a diet that is well-rounded. Uh, I have the diet of a rabbit. For the most part, I eat a lot of greens, um, but not a lot of potassium, not a lot of, not a lot of certain types of protein, but I, I like vegetarian food, but I eat meat, so I guess I get the best of both worlds, and that's all right with me. I mean, you might want something to do while you're doing this. Um, I usually have my Nintendo Switch. I've been playing uh, Breath of the Wild, uh, The Legend of Zelda, and I beat that. And there's not, nothing more to do except buy the DLC or the Amiibo. I'm not paying for that crap. And uh, I'm back to Skyrim. <laughs> oh, good old Skyrim. Uh, I, I like to play guitar, as long as it's not obstructing any, any part of dialysis. Um, I see a pick across the room, and I can't go get it, because I have to stay within the vicinity of this uh, line, this tether right here, uh, as I drain. So I'm going to drain out. Draining pretty well. It looks fine. It's clear, as you can see. If you can read a newspaper print for it, then it's good. It, this bag is going to fill up, by the way. So I'm going to be here a while. 
Um, because that's higher, do the math, um, it'll take less time to actually fill my uh, body up with that fluid. So, got something to do. guitar around. It's saying the dials is blues. Uh, that's not a real song. Hey? Okay. Uh, I'm your regular Bismarcky of uh, guitar and dialysis. Whatever that means. Shout out to Guitar Emporium, by the way. I know they've been following what's been going on, but Guitar Emporium in Louisville, Kentucky, which is where I am, uh, I love that place. I've been going there since I was a kid, and that is like my candy store. And I can't afford anything in there, but, uh, <laughs> like, uh, you know, I'm going to try one of these days. I might sell a couple of guitars and uh, and buy a, like a Rickenbacker, you know. Uh, I think John Lennon played one for a while, if you uh, are familiar with that. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, Guitar Emporium is the real Smithsonian, Smithsonian of guitars here in Louisville. And, uh, See, they're right across the street from Bewop. And if you live in Louisville, oh, you know, we can take our mask off now. We can take this down for a little bit. If you live in Louisville, the, uh, the Bewop shop is right across the street. That's where you go for uh, like newer equipment, mm, high, not more high tech stuff. And uh, like they can assist you with all that and more. And, uh, they even ran out karaoke machines and stuff like that. Guitar Emporium is for vintage, hard to find, one of a kind, in some cases, instruments. And, uh, you know, uh, they have new ownership as of a couple of years ago. And uh, I totally recommend to go, to go in there. Don't pick everything up, okay? They don't like that. These are old guitars, expensive, expensive guitars. Don't go in there and pick up their guitars and act like, you know, it's a, like a, uh, a toy store, which it is, but a very expensive toy store. So, you know, oh, and in Bewop, there's also some etiquette. Don't play the electronic drum set with the headphones so loud that people can hear what you're playing. That's the whole point of an electric drum set, is so that no one hears you. And then when the guy next to you is playing guitar through a tiny amp, he's got it turned all the way up. There are a couple songs that you are not allowed to play in Bewop. One of those is uh, Under the Bridge. Of course, No Stairway to Heaven. Nope. Uh, from the old Wayne's World uh, sketch, uh, 
No stairway. No Skinner, I don't think. And, um... There's something else. I'm forgetting that. I told you this was going to be boring. But, uh... It looks like we're almost full. Um, you check the bag to see if you're draining. See, I'm actually quite full. Okay. That's... Uh, big-ass bag of fluid right there. That's probably about, uh, let's say about like 2.7 milliliters. I don't know what it would be in imperial units or American units. I just know a metric system now. That's for sure. All right, so, It's still dripping a little bit, and usually you can move yourself around. Kind of squeeze your abdominal muscles a little bit. Don't squeeze too hard. You don't want to herniate or anything. I mean, that where that port goes in, you don't want to herniate that. That would be a disaster. Still draining. What we're pulling out here in this bag is more than what's in that bag or from earlier. So I've had a little bit of fluid here and there and food and then uh, just a little bit of fluid that I drank. I use a lower concentration of fluid, so I actually get a lot of my fluid from dialysis. That's not preferable, but uh, I have zero kidneys in my, well, zero functioning kidneys in my body. I have, um, I have my native kidney, which is uh, dead. I was born with one kidney, and that kidney was small. And through the years of high, unmoderated blood blood pressure, it finally failed. It's a condition known as hypertensive nephrosclerosis. Uh, I can't say that seven times fast. Uh, I can spell it. It's, um, hypertensive as in high blood pressure. Nephro meaning kidney and sclerosis meaning uh, death of and so um, death of tissue kidney through the blood pressure. All right, it's done draining. So we're gonna call a spade a spade and come back to our, well, that fell off while well, I wasn't looking. Uh, what we're gonna do now, this has a little break on it. My gear to snap. Okay, we've opened the fluid from that bag. Now we need to turn the dial with the flush. That is going to prime the line. Speaking in automotive terms, that is going to, um, it's like turning on the ch turning the choke on and off, um, and turning your carburetor on and off to uh, get the starter going. Uh, count to five, or wait till the bubbles stop appearing. You don't want to get any bubbles from that bag into your body because the bubbles can hurt up here. Although you don't have nerve endings in that part of your body, the body finds a way to tell you that something's not right. And uh, in this case, um, air bubbles really hurt. They send a pain signal to the brain. But where that pain is, it, it's a... Uh, uh, it's hard to place. I can't really describe it. You just have to feel it because it's a it's a nerve ending sort of thing. 
I might as well drop this. I uh, I am registered to uh, just got I, I think the final X-ray I needed to become eligible to receive a kidney. Uh, I'm an A blood type. Tissue type is a little bit rare, let's say. Um, that's that's my my concern, but uh, I don't I don't want to be a person who. Uh, is constantly scared. I, I want to be a person who's, who's active. Um, I think um, there's no point in being scared if you're not doing anything to uh, improve your condition. And I, I um, am definitely working on that. Um, uh, let's see. So, University of Cincinnati is where I'm registered. Call Tina. Hi, Tina. Um, Tina. It reminds me of the, the llama from the movie Napoleon Dynamite. Never mind. Never mind that. Yeah, I didn't see that. So, um, yeah. So now we're draining from up there to inside my body with new fluid and uh, you raise that bowl higher uh, the quicker it goes in. Okay, uh, for those of you who have ever bonged a beer, you know how this works, okay? You know who you are, all right? You were, you were in college once. Uh, you were at that party and you bonged a beer and uh, essentially that's what your uh, elevation is your friend. So, uh, beer bonging, the one point, or sorry, 2.5 uh, milliliters of, no, 3,000 milliliters, sorry, of dextrose. And we will probably get out a little bit more than that. We'll probably get out like 3,300, 3,200. For a while, I was getting 37, 3800, and they switched me to a lower solution. Or I could have just stop talking. How do you like that? talk again. Um, let's see, about what? Um, uh, let's see, this pedal here.
Yeah, this one reminds me of the teacher from Charlie Brown. And you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Hold on. This effect should be called Aliens from Uranus.
this effect. short enough. Um, we had that safety cap from earlier. Okay. Sanitize your hand. Turn it red. Now, mask on. The order of operations is we're going to unplug or turn the dial to close, which inserts a pin which uh, is going to press into a betadine cap and clean everything up uh, once we're clamped. So this clamp, so this clamp is the last uh, safety measure right here. If all else fails, use the clamp, basically. So turn that, clamp, okay. Slightly disengage the cap, slightly disengage the catheter port. Pull this part off and screw that into the other part of the safety cap. And there you have it. You're done. Um, take your old piece and screw it back onto the port. This pops back out. That's all garbage now. It's not recyclable. That's what really sucks about this. It's not recyclable. So uh, somewhere in a landfill, um, they don't want the landfill. And uh, even better reason to get a kidney. So if you want, if you would like to donate a kidney, contact the kidney transplant department of the University of Cincinnati. That's uh, area code 513-584-0000. That's the general number to the hospital. Uh, from there, they can direct you. Take your mask off now. Um, and we got stuff to clean up now. So uh, that's that. That's the video. Um, oh, well. So... Uh, Thank you very much for tuning in. If you watched that whole thing, my apologies, I guess, because it's, uh, it's not exactly exciting. But talk to you later.